This is Tata Harper. I love her stuff because I want to reopen the pores a little. You guys know we can't reopen our pores. That's not the right terminology for it. Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I have another reaction video for you and we're looking at the beautiful Naomi Watts. She is a wonderful actress. She has been in so many movies that I love or I just thought were really incredible movies that have just stood out to me over time. One of them being Mulholland Drive. She's also very interesting because she is 54 years old and she's been really open about her experience with menopause and experiencing it early in her life. She also started a skincare line. It's actually like a skincare, body care, hair care line, and even supplement line that's really focused on menopause. I'm not sure if I think of like skincare specifically for menopause is like much of a thing, but I think the concept of bringing attention to menopause and being thoughtful about the products that you're offering to women who are going through menopause is a really good message. It's a message that I think has been a long time coming and I'm surprised hasn't been talked about more. So I'm just really interested to see what she's going to use, what she's going to talk about and which products that she's going to tell us about from her own line. As a reminder, these videos are meant to be entertaining and fun. They're meant to get a conversation started about skincare and beauty products and not to necessarily tell you what you should and shouldn't do in your skincare routine, but hopefully it does help you learn and it starts a conversation. Hi everyone, I'm Naomi Watts and I'm gonna walk you through my skincare nighttime routine. Now let's go to bed. I take this time for myself at the end of the day because we all live fast paced, furious lives these days. And I find myself really making sure that I get that time at the end of the day, me time is necessary. So I want to create time for myself as a way to calm down from the stresses of the day. This is something you hear me talk about with skincare a lot. I, you know, at the end of the day, I just want my me time. I spend my time as a mom of young kids. I work, everything is fast paced. I feel like everybody is going through this. And so my nighttime skincare routine is my one moment of peace and it is about me. Step one, get rid of every bit of makeup. I love this for um, eye makeup remover. Actually right now I've got my brows and lashes tinted because I don't like putting on mascara and I don't like having to wear makeup when I don't have to. And for eyes, I love this product because it's very affordable. I used to go to the French pharmacies for this product, but I'm so happy that now they sell it at Target. See, even Naomi shops at Target. Target is the store. Anyway, but I don't have a problem with micellar water, but even when you're using micellar water, you still wanna be really gentle with your skin. You don't wanna tug at it. She's saying, she's basically letting us know that women aren't gonna see anything come off of her skin because she basically has her brows and her lashes tinted. It doesn't actually even look like she's got any makeup on. You know, we saw her kind of doing that swiping motion. And I think that we just associate that with cleansing our skin or with like removing eye makeup. But what I think is best to do is to soak a cotton pad with your micellar water and just place it over your eye for a little bit. Really soften up your eye makeup, especially if you're dealing with mascara or eyeliner, especially if it's waterproof or water resistant. And then when it softens up, then you wanna gently swipe away. That's when you're gonna get the best results with the least amount of tugging. So step two, I always clean the face again. You know, makeup remover has already taken place. This is our resting clean face, which is a cleanser, really to address hydration issues. It's not stripping at all, even though it's very effective with its getting rid of everything. We really did a few rounds of this because a woman going through menopause was not necessarily being spoken to directly. And really, I mean, the whole point of creating my brand, Stripes, was based on the fact that my skin was not doing well and that was precipitated by going into early menopause. You lose estrogen and then your skin can be one of the main side effects because it gets irritated and angry and um, we wanted to make sure that it doesn't leave the skin dry. Also a splash off rather than a wipe off because again that can create a stripping effect and um, 
take away from the hyd hydration. So she's bringing up a lot of different things that you've probably heard me talk about over the years when it comes to your skin and your skin health. I don't want you tugging at your skin. I want you to treat it like it's baby skin, like it is a baby. Be very gentle with your skin and don't tug and rub and be just really harsh with your skin. She's kind of saying something along the same line. So while this cleanser isn't necessarily only for women going through menopause, I do love that it creates this conversation around the effects and the changes that women going through menopause might experience. And that is what she's talking about. When you lose estrogen or when you stop producing as much estrogen as you do when you're younger and before you go through menopause, your skin starts to get drier. This goes for men also. As you age, your skin does get drier because you aren't producing the same types of hormones. Your hormones have changed. Women specifically, as you go through menopause, your skin does get drier. So you want to do everything you can to not strip your skin and to not dry your skin out. So this is a really nice sounding cleanser. I have I've never used it before, but it sounds like it's a cream cleanser. It sounds like it's a cleanser that's really great to not strip your skin. And if it does cleanse well, then it's probably gonna leave your skin feeling very moisturized and nourished. I'm gonna try doing this. <laughs> She's cute. Splashing off. There we go, I just splashed off. And, and dabbing. You know, if you have got lots of makeup on, I travel with these, by the way. These are great. And I hate it when people take off makeup with white cloths because it just seems, even in a hotel, rude to leave your black stains and, you know, red lipstick streaks. And it's just not nice. So I, I always take one of those. Okay, so now I've got pretty, fresh skin. She makes a good point. I have actually been to hotels where they have your makeup remover towel there on the sink. And what they basically are saying is like, if you didn't wash your face well, don't use our white towels to just like remove the last bits of it. You know, we've all been there. We've all been there. Sometimes it's like up into like my hairline. If I haven't cleansed really well in there, cause I'm trying to preserve my hair and not get it frizzy at the scalp, you know, like I might like wipe here and be like, oh shoot, I did leave like a touch of contour still there. That's what they're talking about. When you don't remove your eye makeup properly, you know, like that rubbing that you do with your towel. That's what she's talking about. Face halos. I am not a huge fan of using microfiber cloth to solely remove your makeup. Like when you just add water and then you rub because you're still getting that same effect. You're tugging too hard on your skin. But I do think that microfiber cloths are great to towel off your face very gently after you have washed your face. This is an exfoliation, Joanna Vargas. I love her products. It smells like, I don't know, 12 different kinds of fruit to me. This is, something I do miss doing, and I definitely do it less now that I've got uh, menopausal skin. It has a, a grain, but it's fine, and the, the fruits feel soothing enough. Normally I use a paintbrush, but I'm just gonna use my fingers right now. I do this just now and again, maybe once a month. But you know, if I'm going to an event, it definitely brings the skin back to life. And I love the gold feels chic somehow. I started to learn about menopause. In fact, probably only the second or third time I heard the word uttered to me was unfortunately in my late thirties when I was trying to start a family, I was in shock. My mother had told me she'd gone in early, but I really didn't know much else. And I said to my mother, why didn't you tell me? And she said, well, these are the conversations I didn't have with my mother because she never had them with hers. That just hit hard. It made me realize, wow, this is a secret that has been kept generation upon generation. And somehow everyone signed this code of silence, yet everyone's going there at some point. Why isn't it talked about? Why do women have to be made to feel like they no longer exist? I mean, that's the message. When, when we're saying it's not there, it never happened, you're basically only able to read into it that you're done, it's over. <laughs> or suck it up and cope, definitely don't complain. Yeah, I, I felt a little bit alone and I was certainly running this by many of my friends and I was ahead of them and I kind of could feel the awkwardness that sort of gave me the message that they weren't there or particularly open to talk about it. 
I think I should take this off now. Oh, that felt really heavy. You know, I feel like I haven't had enough conversations. In fact, no one has talked to me about menopause and I'm probably at the age where I should be dealing with perimenopause and maybe I am and I don't even really put it together right now. You know, this is a really important conversation. I'm glad that I'm starting to see more conversations around it and maybe I'm in my own little echo chambers on social media with like the people I follow and stuff, but I do feel like I'm seeing more OBGYNs, female doctors talk about hormones and menopause and perimenopause. I feel like this is becoming more of a topic and I'm really glad to hear that because I do actually agree with Naomi Watson that you don't hear anyone talking about what can be done to solve your issues when you are going through menopause. And I do think that's a really big deal. And it, it's really sad that women at a certain age when they go through menopause are basically just told without even being told that that's it. That's just what you deal with now. As far as this mask goes, it doesn't actually seem like she's done talking about it, but I will throw out there. She said that she uses it less now that she's dealing with signs of menopause and the changes with her skin. I assume she's referring to she doesn't want to use an exfoliating mask that has that like physical exfoliation to it. You know that I'm not always a huge fan of physical exfoliation. I do think it serves its place and I'm not anti. I just think that choosing the right products for your skin is the way to go. And sometimes physical exfoliation is the way to go for some skin types. And sometimes even for myself, I'll use a physical exfoliate like once or twice a month just to really feel like you're getting that deep exfoliation. I will throw out there though, this product doesn't sound bad for somebody who's dealing with menopause. I think what you have to remember if you are dealing with menopause is that if your skin is getting drier, that means your skin is just naturally going to be more sensitive. So just keep that in mind when you're choosing exfoliating products. That said, this has lactic acid in it and that is an AHA and alpha hydroxy acid and it's also very hydrating for your skin. So if there were an exfoliating ingredient that I would recommend for somebody going through menopause, it would probably be one of those ingredients that would be really high on the list for people with menopause, meaning that they're dealing with dry skin. The grains can be fiddly, so I'm really gonna, you know, put my head down in the sink and wipe off here. Right up on her hair. I'm gonna hope that it dries and I can just dust them off. I did the cleansing, feeling squeaky clean, okay. I would consider a rinse off mask like that to be basically a cleansing step. It might not have actual surfactants in it, I'm not even looking. Not all clay masks have surfactants in it, but I would probably consider that to be a cleanse step. I like to leave my face damp actually, and I've just dried it off, so maybe I'll just use a mist. This is Tata Harper, I love her stuff because I want to reopen the pores a little. Now I'm gonna go to the serum. You guys know we can't reopen our pores. That's not the right terminology for it. When you're hydrating your skin, your skin does better absorb your products as long as you're applying your products to damp hydrated skin. But that doesn't mean that your pores are opening up to absorb the product. It's just a terminology thing here. I, I think we know what she meant by this, but your pores do not open and close. I used to use that Tata Harper toner, that spray mist. I haven't used it in a long time. I remember it having a very distinct fragrance fragrance to it and that might be one of the reasons why I stopped using it but I do feel like spray mists and toners are having a little bit of a moment like they're starting to have a resurgence. I don't know what do you guys think. I'm all about a toner. I think toners, essences, spray mists, as long as they're hydrating for your skin are always a great idea to add into your skincare routine. Necessary? No. Nice? Absolutely. And you definitely see a difference in the hydration levels of your skin. This is our serum. Okay, it's called the Power Move and Eye Stripes and this is the combination of the ectoine and the squalene and also five different hyaluronic acids. We know a lot about hyaluronic acid and how hydrating that can be, um, but this is really, really plumping. People have said how much they love this. It leaves such a nice, smooth texture. It can live on its own, but if you're like me, you're on the drier side, you want an extra layer. And right now it's not only cold, but we're getting ready for bed. So we're going to use. You know, I feel like hyaluronic acid serums are getting like a 2.0 moment right now where they're like going into a new phase. Like people don't want just a basic hyaluronic acid serum anymore for that hydration and plumping. Ectoin is a ingredient that everyone's trying to make happen and maybe it will. And I'm seeing it in so many more products lately and being talked about. Ectoin is really great because it's an ingredient that helps to really protect your skin barrier. It helps to keep 
the hydration and moisture on your skin. It's a really great ingredient. This is an ingredient that they really like hang their hat on with this brand I noticed. As far as using this on its own, it has squalane in it. I wouldn't say this is emollient enough to really be a product that does not have a moisturizer on top of it. I would absolutely put a moisturizer on top of it. And even if I had really oily skin, I would probably still wanna put something on top of it to help seal in that hydration. That's a really important part of using a hydrating serum. But besides that, I can't imagine, again, without feeling this and using it myself, I can't imagine it's like so much more special than any other kind of hydrating serum you might have. Which has just launched. So these are, this is a pump and it just goes like that. And you know, you can just smudge that off. And I just gently pat it in. It is soothing because of the Actuin. And also it's got the retinoids in it, but not too strong. Some of the retinols are too harsh for menopausal skin. I mean, I feel ready for bed already. <laughs> I actually really love knowing that there is a product in her skincare routine and in her line that has any kind of retinoid in it because we see way too many people skip the retinoids when it comes to celebrity skincare routines. I don't know why, but this is a thing. Like we see them pull out like 20 different products and then we never see them pull out a retinoid, which I would say arguably is one of the more important skincare ingredients in a nighttime skincare routine. Can retinoids be really harsh for women going through menopause? I suppose, but again, I go back to if you are dealing with menopause, you're dealing with drier skin. Drier skin tends to be more sensitive. So of course your skin can be more sensitive and you just want to ease your way into retinoids if you are new to it. But if you are going through menopause and you can handle even like prescription strength tretinoin, like real retinoic acid, stay with it because you will be very happy that you're using it for your skin. I wouldn't be scared. I almost feel like that felt very scary to like start using a retinoid if you're dealing with menopause. I still think you should try to work your way up to as strong of a retinoid as you can and use it as consistently as you can. I've actually seen people say like, why would anybody want to buy just a regular retinol product? If there are products with retinaldehyde out there or if there are prescription strength retinoids out there, the reason for that is because every skin type is different, every level is different, and your goal is to be as consistent with your retinoid usage as possible. I like to use a retinoid every single night. So for me, 0.05% regular retinol, not even retinaldehyde, is where I'm at. Like that, I know I can use every single night and I am not gonna see any issues and my skin is going to be glowy. It's going to be beautiful. And that is where like my sweet spot is. And so I'm one of those people that does better with a regular retinol. Really the key is to just test it with your own skin and see where you're at. Just because you're going through menopause and you have dry skin doesn't mean that you can't use a retinoid or even a strong retinoid or even a prescription strength one, right? I love that this is a really gentle retinoid. I think there is a place for gentle retinoids for sure. This is actually a really gentle retinoid ingredient. A lot of people will know it best as granite active, like from the ordinary. There are some really promising studies that show you get results from using this. It's just gonna be a little bit slower and over time by using something more gentle. This also is a really great product because it's moisturizing for your skin. It does have the ectoin in it and the squalane in it. So I assume this is gonna feel really nourishing for the skin. And the chances of having irritation from this retinoid product are much slimmer. So this would be a really good entry level retinoid. I love this body oil, which is Ooh. filled with antioxidants. It's the only one that doesn't have ectoin in it because it's, it doesn't pair well with oil yet. We'll figure that out though. So this smells divine. It's got like a gorgeous musky smell, but it's also grounded with some amber and earthy tones. People love this. I've got men that use this and you don't have to be menopausal, by the way, for any of these products. They are, as I said, very soothing for sensitive skin and irritations and people that just, you know, are very dry. And oh, and this one, I, I love tools. These things are always fun to do. Oh. Just be a little gentle. If you've got skin that you feel like it's got a little bit of laxity and you're losing that elasticity and everything, just wanna make sure, like I actually would have grabbed that oil and been like whoop all over my face and then put a tool. She was just kind of showing it to you, but you know, we don't know how we're using it. So just be careful. You don't wanna tug and make it worse. As far as the oil goes for the body, I love a good body oil. If I have dry skin, dehydrated skin, I might wanna put on something a little bit more hydrating and moisturizing first because oil doesn't really hydrate your skin. So I would probably do that first. 
first, but if you're putting this on maybe like directly after you get out of the shower or something and your skin is still a little bit more damp, that might be perfectly fine and all you need. This has some really nice oils in it. They're rich in different nutrients. That's one of probably the best benefits of a body oil or a face oil in general is the nutrients that oils just tend to have. Eye cream. This is like a roll on thing. I just got this the other day and I really like it. Feels good for morning and night. And this, I also just got from Onda. This is a fantastic lip balm. My lips get super dry. <laughs> Sound effects here. Plumping and soothing. And it's also got a little tingle, so it makes you feel kind of good for kissing. Hmm, speaking. Off. That's a perfectly fine eye serum. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's really hydrating for the skin. It is more watery, more water-based and thinner. So I would personally put that on before I put on a moisturizer just so it absorbs better. I get more benefits from it. And you want to put on your more oily products or heavier products after your thinner, more watery products. So that's just one note of that. I'm sure the rollerball feels really nice too. Nice and cooling and massaging. Lip plumper. Haven't tried that one. I'm sure it's extremely expensive because of the brand. Plumping isn't always a good thing. It's not always a terrible thing. It's not always a good thing. I'm sure it's a perfectly fine lip balm, but it's just like a note. It's like, meh. Is it good for kissing? I personally wouldn't want to kiss somebody who suddenly started to make my lips tingle. I'd be like, oh my god, I'm having an allergic reaction <laughs> to kissing this person. That's what I would be thinking. I have my last and final one. I use Badge of Honor. Oh, speaking of kissing, she said. <laughs> Badge of Honor. Let's see. This isn't strictly a lube. This is a moisturizer. It is a vaginal moisturizer. It's oil-based, again with Ectoin. And she's not putting this on camera, is she? And you just wee ooh. <laughs> and it's just a nice thing to add on to the list of things to do. That is all about hydrating. I actually like it because if you feel awkward doing the old reach over for the, you can just get prepped early on. Learning a little bit, learning a lot about Naomi Watts. You definitely do dry out, just like your skin gets dehydrated, everything else gets dehydrated. I think a lube is really important. So I can see, I mean, I can see how this would be an interesting product. 90% of women will experience dryness. It's just the same. It's, this is your skin, this is your skin and this is your skin and it all needs hydrating, especially when you're going through menopause. I wanted to take the shame out of it and if you don't need lube, use the moisturizer. It's nice for if you're wearing tight jeans, if you're exercising. It's just a nice thing to add on to your daily routine. Thank you everyone. Thanks for listening along. Thank you to Harper's Bazaar. Hope you enjoy this routine. Good night. Good night. I have questions about using a moisturizer for my vag. I don't know. A moisturizer for my vag, would it become swampy? <laughs> like real question, would it become swampy if you're like adding moisture, right? We're like, I think I've grown up for so long thinking we shouldn't leave moisture down there because that can lead to yeast infections. So what I think about a lot, I think about like exercise clothing and being told to remove your exercise clothing if you're sweaty. But if there's no moisture, undecided, and I'd actually love to hear from anybody in the comments that thinks that that actually would be a good idea because maybe I just don't fully appreciate this yet. I definitely love her message. She was trying to take the shame out of it. I absolutely know that, you know, lube is important for your sexual activity for sure. If you're dry, that hurts. Ouch, you know, but I've never heard of using a moisturizer for the girl parts. I'm not sure that's a bad idea. I'm just saying I haven't heard about this and here she is educating us on what might be really good to do. So I'd love to hear what you guys think of using a moisturizer for down there. Again, I really love that she is making menopause a conversation. I think it is long long overdue. It's especially important to me because as I head that way, it's definitely something that I want to be thinking about. And I'm so glad that there are people leading the way in that conversation so that by the time I need it, there will be answers that a lot of people I know, my mom, my mother-in-law, my family members, they don't have answers for and that they've just had to deal with. So it's, it's really nice that this conversation is getting started. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. You can also find me on social media. I'm on Instagram and TikTok at Susan Yara. Talk to you soon.